So um, nowadays, everybody uses the internet, so everyone's susceptible to cyberbullying. Um, surveys have found uh, younger people, especially, uh, especially, experience it. So we just decided to try to use LSI to uh, detect it. Traditionally, we uh, there's been the developers would create a dictionary list of bullying terms and weight each term with um, a weight of how severe they think that bullying term is. So the less severe, the lower the number would be, the more severe, the higher. Um, uh, the way to do that is you need a term by document matrix and you just count up the amount of bullying terms in each document and you will get a vector like W um, that will contain every document and the score for that document in terms of the higher the score, the more bullying content, the lower the score, the less. Um, LSI does it a little bit differently where you get the term by document matrix. And when I say term by document matrix, it's just every term that's used throughout all of the documents would be on one axis and then uh, the other would be all of the documents. Um, so then LSI uh, it uses the term by document matrix and performs its uh, algorithm on it and it breaks it down into three smaller matrices um, and then you truncate it by some uh, number you find. We optimized it, I think it was around 300. Um, and then you multiply the truncated uh, matrices back together and um, then when you multiply your query vector in, uh, which is the, uh, so uh, say you make a post that is a, um, you're trying to check if it's cyberbullying or not, that would be your query vector. And you multiply it by this, uh, the truncated term by document matrix, and you'd get the um, weighted vector again. So it would be similar to that first one where every, it's a um, vector of documents, and every uh, document has a weight for how high the cyberbullying content is. It's, not quite as directly related because it's not bullying terms, because LS, uh, it's not weights for bullying terms, because LSI takes out um, uh, the direct relationships and counts orders of codependence. And uh, so it builds relationships between words to find um, important, like uh, cyberbullying content. You can see, and like Google uses LSI keywords, to, that's how they search. Um, for keywords, because you're not just searching for that one word, but you're searching for words related to that word. Um, so for our data set, we use formspring.me, which is an online uh, uh, question and answer based website where users can anonymously ask other users questions. Um, from those 18,000 users, we randomly selected 13,000, uh, 1,000, or 13,159 posts. Um, we used Amazon Mechanical Turk to label the data. It's, uh, Amazon provides a service where you can pay um, random people to complete tasks that computers can't. Um, obviously computers can't do this task, that's why it's a project. Um, we had three Turkers label each post and we decided, uh, since it's a little bit subjective, uh, that two needed to agree in order for a cyberbullying post to be considered uh, cyberbullying. After all of those uh, all of those posts were labeled, we found that 848 were positively identified as a uh, cyberbullying, which is just 6.4 percent of our data. Um, so then, with our data set of these 13,159 posts, we gathered. We started with 40,000 unique terms. Um, for LSI to work, we need that number to be much lower. We want it to be around like 5,000 unique terms. And because this is like uh, online, a lot of the words were either online jargon or like uh, misspelled or emoticons. So in order to prune our, our list, we started by normalizing emoticons. When I say emoticons, it's a series of punctuation uh, to represent uh, some sort of emotion. So um, anything that could possibly look like a smiley face, we just had the written phrase smiley face to represent it. Then we removed all punctuation after that and removed any one character words. We got rid of one character words because words like A or I doesn't really help define a post as cyberbullying or not because all posts use them. Um, then we dealt with the spell uh, spelling issues. So you can see the first three steps I kind of already talked about. Um, 
And then we go into Chekhov's online jargon. We had a word, a word of commonly used like online jargon words like lol, IDK, um, you see there? And then we would just change them into their more commonly uh, uh, spelled version. If it wasn't one of those online jargon words that we uh, decided on, then we sent it to the spell check. We used language tools. Um, language tools is an open source proofreading program. Um, it was pretty convenient for us to use because it was like a spell checker that we didn't have to create on our own and it had rules that you could set on or off so you can get revolved grammatical rules and stuff like that because we're just checking one word at a time. We don't want to look at the grammar. So that was helpful. Um, then we re uh, removed high and pre low frequency words. Again, because low frequency words, if it's only used one line to post LSI isn't going to gain any information from it. And if it's used in a lot of posts, LSI won't be able to gain any information about it. Um, yeah, so that's how we uh, pruned our list. And we started with. Um, 40,000 unique terms, and we got down to 5,716, which was a reduction of 85%. It was pretty good. Um, so then we, oh, just a trigger warning, there's some harsh language on the next slide. But these are actual posts that come up, so don't be alarmed. Um, so we initially um, sent in a query, the first one, um, and sent it, and uh, we had our truncated document matrix, and the way we counted um, precision is so if we're if n equals ten, like here, then the first ten posts that are returned, the top ten matching posts to the initial query, um, if they were cyberbullying posts correctly identified, so say like that first one looks like five out of ten were correctly identified, so you get fifty percent. Um, um, and we can see for like at the top ranks for n equals 10 to 100, we did uh, very well. Um, our baseline is 6.4%, so we uh, way overperformed that. Um, we can see for when we go up further to uh, 10 to 400 that we decrease and we aren't doing quite as well in the higher ranks, but this kind of makes sense because um, there's only 6.4%, um, so we're having trouble finding the ones further out. Um, uh, but we're still uh, outperforming the baseline by quite a bit. Um, to get a better sense of performance, we measure recall, recall versus precision. Um, so that's, we can, uh, so for every, So if we're looking to find um, the first 10% or the first 10% of identified posts, then at uh, basically in the first 10% of our posts is where most of our correctly identified uh, Boeing posts are coming, and then we're dropping off. And after we get past that first 10%, we're really missing a lot, and as you can see our. Um, we're decreasing in our precision by quite a bit, almost down to a baseline as we put um, towards the end. That would be finding all of the posts, and to find all the posts, it takes about what the baseline would take, um, which isn't great, but uh, this was preliminary results and kind of just the proof of concept that uh, LSI could be used to detect cyberbullying. Um, so in conclusion, we've developed a system to detect cyberbullying. Um, in short posts uh, littered with spelling errors, abbreviation, and odd punctuations, um, and it's not dependent on a database of Boolean terms, and instead uses LSI. Um, that's all. Thank you. Um, it would, I don't, the only thing would be terribly difficult is just 
you might have to modify it. Like, I don't know how well to perform on those, but to like actually take this and run it on bigger or more posts wouldn't be very difficult. I, I mean, I'd, I'd be interested to see if it's like how the results come out, but I, it wouldn't be hard to take like the program I created and, and just give it more posts. Mm -hmm. With, uh, with the Snapchat, that's a very interesting question. Um, I mean, I, I guess like to start, you probably just uh, extract the text. Um, but I'm, I mean, the pictures probably have some sort of uh, like indicative of whether it's cyberbullying or not. Um, yeah. So like you probably <coughs> like you really wanted to get into it with Snapchat, give them to some sort of record. Like, you know, Thinking would kids get around all of these. Yeah, I don't know, Snapchat, I mean, I don't know, the nice thing about Snapchat is at least it's not there for like, up there for, you know, right. format you're going to get for so a while. They, they get smarter and they adapt. True. Yeah. I mean, I'm at it as a parent. You said you ignored all one letter words. Well, then I would start putting spaces in between every single one of my letters. And then you got to avoid all text and start <laughs> You could, yeah, you could do that type of program, yeah. Um, but I, none of the kids that had already written posts were writing. I mean, they all knew yeah. not to do this that. This is a hard part. Yeah. No, it's definitely, that's why, I mean, it's a big field. There was the first uh, con international cyberbullying conference in Indianapolis this past um, winter. I, I went and attended. It's a growing field for sure. You had another question? That's a good question. I am um, initially I I so if it was if there were mixed cap like capital letters and not I converted to lowercase and okay. kept words that were all caps because I thought words that were all caps like you know probably meant more than words that were. But I think on our data set size it ended up hurting more than helping. So I, I like reversed the decision and just converted everything to lowercase just because we really want like terms that are the same to be counted as sort of like each other um, and. It was just making just a couple extra terms and devaluing some of those relationships. Um, so what about, so how did you handle like, like Getting running LSI wasn't that difficult because R does most of that, but like pruning it was definitely the biggest part of this project. And I mean, I definitely didn't catch all of those. Right. Like um, the the spell checker, the language tools definitely helped to correct some words, but I mean, it also definitely missed some and maybe incorrectly changed stuff, some stuff. Mm -hmm. I think the best way to do that is is with those like online like common online jargon words is to just like extensively go through and like find a bunch of those and change them, but that's that's a lot of time. Um, I didn't get, I didn't, definitely didn't catch them all. So I'm sorry you guys, we have to move on with schedule, but do you have any more questions? Oh, so first of all, this thing. <laughs>